and welcome to Nadia's Molten Imaginings. Today I am going to be trying out something I have wanted to try for a very long time and this is paint pouring. This is a very very cheap kit I got and I wanted to try to make a pour and then go over the top of it with encaustic wax and recently I actually went to a local exhibition which it was the first time I have ever seen a paint pour in real life and it was amazing. Literally so much detail, so much stuff that I just want to capture and so previously I'd only ever seen paint pours online and so I'm really really in the mood for doing this now. Right, let's get started. Uh. So just to make sure that I don't make a mess when I do this, I've got a plastic uh, lid from one of my boxes and I'm going to be pouring onto this just to make sure it doesn't go everywhere because I was slightly concerned that it might. Right, let's open this. A little cap. I've got four colours of paint and some PVA glue. There's some lovely colours. There's some lovely colours. An instruction manual. And a piece of canvas board. That's very straightforward. <laughs> so I've got all my paints, I've got my PVA glue to mix, and I've got some little mixing sticks and these little fine ones for, I think, like teasing the paint whilst it's liquid. That'll be fun. Oh, okay. How do I add the... Loose the hell. much in there. Uh, mm. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that. Mm. Oh, 
from darkest to lightest. Oh, okay. Done that wrong already. Put the canvas face down on top of the mixing cup. Make sure the cup is in the center of the canvas. Canvas and cup so the cup is upside down on top of the canvas, then slowly start to lift the cap up and paint will start to flow over the canvas. Hold the cup firmly in place. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh wow, something's happening. <laughs> now I need to change the camera angle. Oh, it's not going to look good at all. <laughs> take these little teasing sticks and tease some areas some white Ooh. oh that's satisfying <laughs> and of course wipe it after each one so that I don't just drag the dark colour around with me is satisfying. So I ended up making two paintings with this one first and then this one with what I had left of the paint. I just sort of plopped the whole lot left onto this piece of cardboard, just an offcut. Unfortunately, although this looks really nice on camera, it didn't turn out very well because the edges are very uh, rough. The paint didn't exactly pour right to the edge, so I just used the spatulas and sort of spread it about, which is not really what you're supposed to be doing with the pour. I did have to do that slightly on this one as well, but it doesn't matter so much because this is a smaller one and I'm going to be working into it with the encaustic. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is take my iron and maybe dab some wax around the edges and then with the stylus I'm just going to work into it with some detail. And then for this one I'm just going to cut it down to maybe like the centre and uh, maybe work into that a little bit as well. We shall see. I start off by just dabbing the edges of the canvas with the iron and this creates these interesting foliage patterns which look rather different on canvas than on say smooth paper. I was a bit unsure about what colours to go for um, and I chose some blues and purples to start with and then I was going to go for a red but then I decided I was going to just stick with the colours that were already in the pore painting itself. I'm just building up layers of the wax so that... If you're enjoying this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It would be much appreciated.
Then I'm just going in with a stylus and I'm pulling out certain features that I can see um, very much in the way that I was doing the intuitive painting in my last video. I'm just looking at the shapes and seeing what I see and drawing around them or near them. There are lots of swirling clouds and I'm just following these lines, making them into um, spindly trees and I've got this weird crocodile dragon down at the bottom. And there's an eye emerging from the clouds and in the top right hand corner there's two silver birds flying. After cutting this second painting down to a circle size, I add a little more foreground detail before defining these mountain shapes which are very obvious throughout the painting. I'm using mainly just the purple and the violet wax, blending them together as I work to make a nice smoky atmosphere which the mountains are rising out of. In the top right hand corner there are three strange shapes which I teased with the stick. Um, so I outlined these, and these are maybe some sort of UFOs or aliens that live in this cloudy, perhaps gas giant, planet. Can you tell I've been reading too many UFO books again? <laughs> this large pinnacle of rock is surrounded by swirling clouds, and there are two very small jets flying from beneath it. There we have it. Two very interesting purple mystical paintings that originated from paint pours and I am amazed how much interesting random details I managed to pull out of these. I could have just left them abstract but I'm quite glad now that I didn't. Um, please let me know what you think down in the comments and thank you very much for watching.